hello and welcome to spicify if you have not subscribed you are missing a lot subscribe now to join our family of spices in this series we focus on synopsis analysis and summary chapter by chapter of the novel blossoms of the savannah written by the late henry olecolet chapter one the journey in chapter one as the novel begins olecolet is reprimanding loaders for being slow the couple is relocating from Nakuru to Nasila after Olekailo is retrenched from Agribix Limited, where he has been working as the commercial manager. Not long ago, Kailo had denied Tayo a chance to go to Mombasa to develop her talent. That is why Tayo sympathizes with the loaders who are receiving strict instructions from her father. The two girls visualize what life in the new environment will be like. The girls are experiencing apprehension. Nakuru town has always bustled with life and the fear that the shop their father aims at starting may not pick. Tayo encourages Rezian that they should hope for the best. Rezian requests Tayo to plead with their father so that they can join Egerton University. Rezian knows her father listens to Tayo. Through a flashback, the reader learns that Ole Kailo and his wife Mama Milanoi have lived for 22 years since they married, women from Nasila had earlier visited Mama Milanoi at Nakuru and hinted at the hostility expected especially because the daughters are not married. Kylo has been a hard-working man, a trait that led to his promotion at Agribix Limited. The retrenchment has triggered ambition to work so as to be rich. A few kilometers to Nasila, one lorry breaks down, but soon it is fixed and the family reach Uncle Simiren's homestead, where they are welcomed warmly. It is now 30 years since Ole Kailo left Nasila for Nakuru. In all this time he has been away, Uncle Simiren has been representing him and apparently the elders are not happy with the Kailo's monogamous marriage. Simiren on his part has four wives and 16 children. Chapter 2. Nasila Life at the rural Nasila is contrasted with that of Nakuru town. Uncle Simiren is a polygamous man. He has four wives and 16 children. Each of these wives has a house. The girls are introduced to the 16 cousins by the Sinamus' aunt and the eldest wife. The children are aged between 3 and 16 years. And out of the four wives, two aunts are pregnant. Resian and Tayo are allowed to go walking. The girls make the observation that the four aunts are not happy as well with the kids are not contented. Rezian outrightly says she is not ready to be a parent and that she will first learn. They are accosted by a tall, heavy, young man with thick, dark beard and a moustache. Rezian orders the man to leave Tayo alone. According to the man, the girls are not decent for they are uncircumcised. The girls keep the ordeal as a secret. Ole Kailo visits Ole Sumpeo, a famous cattle trader and a longtime friend who supports FGM. Ironically, even though a close friend, Sumpeo is malicious and envious of Kailo, especially when he learns of his great business plan. He, however, wants him to be wary of Ole Sudori, a business partner, and advises him to keep his daughters away from him. Chapter 3 Strange Visitors Ole Kailo ushers his family into the newly constructed house. The Kailos are related by the new house. In a flashback, Mama Milanoi remembers how she was married by Kailo while she was 18 and Kailo 24 years old. The couple has enjoyed peace generally since then, but since she does not have a son, Mama Milanoi feels she has failed Kailo. In a dialogue, we learn that Tayo and Rezian are afraid of undergoing the act and wish to go back to Nakuru and join university. In a dramatic irony, we realize that Kailo has been hard and cruel to Rezian for he expected a son to be born in her place. Although Tayo does not understand the cause of the hatred, she always defends her sister devotedly even when her mother does not offer any protection. Probably Mama Milanoi is afraid of Ole Kailo. Chapter 4 Homecoming ceremony. In order to relink himself to the community, Ole Kailo holds a big celebration party, which is also made for blessing his home. Members from the five Ma clans, Molelian, Lmakesen, Lmakumae, Leiza, and La Tarosero are invited. 
The Kaelos belong to the Molelian clan. Olekaelos are very actively involved in the preparation of the homecoming ceremony. During the dances, Tayo is attracted to the manager of music, a young local primary school music teacher, Joseph Famuat. But unfortunately, they belong to the same clan, and forging the any intimate relationship is an abomination. A carnival mood is witnessed during the party, for the generous Kylo has offered plenty of food stuff. In the dance, Tayo's talent is brought forth, for she is really attracted to the song and dance. We learn that she has always done well in music festivals too. Unfortunately, her father denied her a chance to go for a music extravaganza in Mombasa, which would have developed her talent. Lastly, Musanka leads in the blessing section. He calls upon the community to welcome the Kailos back home. Kailo is advised to involve himself in the community affairs and Nasila. He is also advised to take care of his family and children. Chapter 5 Depressed One Tayo and Rezian are distressed. Rezian feels Tayo is taking too long before broaching the issue of their university studies with their father. The issue of FGM makes the two girls have a sleepless night. Tayo is also disturbed by the cultural law that does not allow her relationship with Joseph Pamwat, the primary school teacher and a music enthusiast. The two girls cry a lot that night. The day before, Joseph had promised to visit her and also coach her in traditional music. The thought of Nkamuratani circumciser and Olmurunya circumcising blade makes Tayo shudder with dread. In Rezian's mind, it is clear that Nkamuratani and her Olmurunya cannot have their way with her, maybe over her dead body. Contrastingly, Kylo and his wife enjoy a great night after the day of the great party and blessings. They feel fulfilled for the great achievement, getting welcomed as well as being blessed. In her morning thoughts, Mama Milanoi is at a dilemma, whether to force the girls to undergo the ritual and lose their faith, love and confidence, or refuse to yield to the traditions and become a pariah in the Molelian clan. Kylo authoritatively states his demands. Mama Milanoi is to cancel her daughters in preparations for the circumcision, while he is to ask Pamwat to teach the girls home truths and later in Kamuratani to be called to do her part. Mama Milanoi interrogatively reflects on her stand and that of her family. She feels her husband is turning into a deep Nasilian very fast. Afterwards, the Kailos visit their agricultural shop. On arriving home, the three females welcome Joseph Pamwat delightfully. As the chapter ends, a second male visitor visits the Kailos. Chapter 6 Olarinkoi Kylo makes a pompous speech introducing Joseph Pamwat. Despite the warning, Tayo is still infatuated with Joseph and decides to make him a confidant. Rezian is critical and dismissive of her father's pompous speech and generally how females are viewed by men. In a defiant mood, Rezian expresses her mind on the subject of unfair men towards women. Surprisingly and daringly, she portrays the defiance to her aunt, mother and Rezian. The listeners are deeply embarrassed, and Botor says Rezian has a bad spirit that can only be treated through circumcision. Tayo's questions who Larinkoi is and is answered by Joseph by telling a legendary story. Larinkon is a legend who was a great fighter who saved the Ma community from being wiped out by an adversary while the Amorans had gone for a raid. Larinkon warriors abused women until one day, Women discovered how to deal with the problem. Their collective resolution ironically gave birth to Nkamuratani, who was handed over by an Olmurunya. Hence the birth of FGM, and therefore, according to Joseph, only women can stop the barbaric FGM. Chapter 7 Shadowy Oloisudori Rezian is in an optimistic mood that all will be well, especially about their university education. Mama Milanoi broaches the subject of FGM. Even though Mama Milanoi supports FGM, Rezian is categorical that it has been used by men as a tool of oppression to women. One Edward Olisudori visits Kailo's home. Rezian is uncomfortable with him, for he is immoral. Mother scorns her for talking ill about him. 
Father returns and due to Rezian's nervousness, he calls her names. Kylo clearly states that all members of the Kylo family must respect Oloisudori and that he should not be denied anything. Rezian learns that her father did not give in to the request about joining university. Joseph reveals that Oloisudori is a shadowy figure, a jack of all trades. He's also a poacher, smuggler, robber, extortionist, and a hired assassin. He had survived numerous jail terms and was now incorrigible. Due to the revelation, the girls fear for their father. When Oloisudori leaves the continents of Kylo and Mama Milanoi changes, they are absent-minded and aloof even though Kylo insists that everything is in control. Mama Milanoi even burns rice without realizing it. Chapter 8. Troubled Couple Oloisudori's cruel demand to marry Rezian and organize the marriage of Tayo renders Kylo and Mama Milanoi a sleepless night. Although Kylo knew Oloisudori's past criminal record, he still falls for his trap due to the greed for wealth. Oloisudori's initial plan was to exhaust money from Kylo, but on re uh, noticing Oloisudori's initial plan was to exhaust money from Kylo, but on noticing his two beautiful daughters, he changed his mind. Mama Milanoi suffers great pain and cries for the olden days when demands such as those of Oloisudori will be dealt with accordingly. Mama Milanoi recalls through flashback how women had invoked mass action on men in the past by depriving men food, milk, beating them up while naked. She contrasts those times with the current times when Nasila River is polluted with chemicals. She fears that Oloisudori may kill her daughter. Despite the hard times the Kailos are experiencing, the following morning, the members manage to afford smiles as they take tea. Even the entrance of Olarinkoi does not dampen the high spirits embraced by the Kailos. Chapter 9. Love Joseph Pamwat begins a routine practice of coaching Tayo and Rezian on traditional songs and dances, and the trio enjoy it immensely. Joseph Pamwat guards against any untoward behavior so as to conserve his integrity. The chapter then says a lot about the Ma culture on different subjects. He explains different types of love to the two girls. Elengatare and Patureshi. Rezian boldly asks Joseph to be her Patureshi, but he explains how it is impossible for that to happen due to Nasila culture norms. Tayo and Rezian question the rigidity of Nasila culture and traditions. They question some negative practices like FGM. Joseph clarifies that culture had dropped some negative practices like throwing the dead and dying to heinous, abandoning the very old and ill in deserted homesteads. In a flashback, Tayo accounts for her love to Joseph. It began on the day their father organized a homecoming celebration, and since then, she has even visited Joseph in his house. Joseph also feels strong love to her, but traditions shield him from her. They think of falling in love and leaving for a far destination. Tayo is ready, but Joseph prefers to abide by Nasila culture. Chapter 10, Olarinkoi vs. the Rapists. A cloud of apprehension hangs around the couple. Oloisudori does not turn up as he had promised earlier. After procrastinating for some time, they find it unbearable. Mother and father leave their home so as to consult their friends, the wife to Simiren and Olekailo to Supeo on the issue touching Oloisudori's callous demand to marry one of their daughters. The two girls go to the shop to have their lunch prepared by the manager, Maiso. On their return journey, they are attacked by two rude young men. On observing the two men, they realize one of their costas was responsible for the earlier ambush. The two young men are frightening, for they are in possession of knob carries. They attempt to rape them, but luckily the girls are rescued by Olarinkoi. The girls cannot thank Olarinkoi enough. The two girls detest the two young men's behavior. The girls feel terribly shaken. Rezian feels she should leave Nasila for university. The incident strengthens Tayo's resolve as a combatant in war zone. Chapter 11. Change of Environment Tayo and Rezian wait for their parents' return to tell them of the near-rape ordeal as they were coming from their shop at Nasila. Olekailo is very agitated on hearing that his daughters were assaulted with the aim of being raped. Their father storms out of the house while their mother asks them 
to go to Simiren's house to have a change of environment, the girls are heartily welcomed at their uncle's home and that enables them to settle very fast. They get used to the communal and polygamous running of affairs at their uncle's home. They learn very many aspects of Nasila culture, both negative and positive. They are told more about Minik and Mkoitoi and Emekerere and their role model by one of Simiren's wife. They are told that she went to Makerere University where she studied veterinary medicine. They admire her position of negative Nasila culture and say they would like to be like her. Through flashback, it is revealed that Rezian's interest in vet medicine began when she and Tayo accompanied their father to an agricultural show in Nakuru and since then she has admired their profession. Tayo plans to compose a song with the help of Joseph Pamuat praising Minik and ridiculing three women who still clung on retrogressive Nesilian culture. Later, they are asked to return home by their parents. A party which their parents also attend is held for them after which they return home. Chapter 12. Retaliation. Olekailo hits the road angry and bitter, complaining to all he meets about the beastly attack on his daughter. He goes to the school where Joseph teaches and explains the events heading to his anger. Joseph parades all pupils and sends boys from Molelian clan to go call their elder brothers and fathers to an urgent meeting at Oirata Plain. The search party narrows down on Lante, son of Kanira, of Lukumai clan and Tara, son of Muyo, also of Lukumai clan as the culprits. They decide to embark on a revenge mission to prevent the further provocation from Lukumai clan. The retaliation is done by the young and old men from Lmolelian clan and the sympathizers from Mumakisen clan. The search party comes across the two culprits who run and fall under the feet of two old men begging for mercy. According to Nasila culture, a man is spared of any crime if he hides his head between the legs of an old man. Nevertheless, they are clobbered, slapped, and kicked by Kylo and his men. It is realized after interrogation that one of the offenders was related to Tayo and Rezian for he was son of Mama Milanoi's sisters. A cleansing ceremony is planned and Ole Kailo is compensated for the trauma he underwent. Ntara Muyo gives Tayo and Rezian each a heifer to remove the shame he caused them. Lante pays two heifers. Ole Kailo continues to have mixed feelings about Ole Sudori's plan to marry his daughter. He consoles himself that Ole Sudori is not an ordinary man and that his business success depended on him. Thus reasoning, he decides to go along with Ole Sudori's plan. He also dismisses negative rumors about Ole Sudori, assuring him that his daughter was lucky to get such a man. Meanwhile, the girl's visit to their uncle's home has greatly changed their outlook on life. It reduces their over-reliance on their parents. They are finally happy that they are getting acceptance in the highly traditional community. Chapter 13. Oloisudori's Grand Visit Oloisudori changes his plans of coming for Rezian in two weeks' time and declares he would do so the following day. He would be accompanied by his three friends and wants Rezian to cook for them. Olekailo asks Rezian to remain at home and cook for them instead of going to help plaster the kitchen of Tayo Kitty with Tayo as they had planned. She is not comfortable with the idea, saying she fears Oloisudori and that he's like a monster. Her father hears none of her protestation. Rezian seeks refuge in the garden. She wonders why she has been chosen and not Tayo. She finds injustice in the way her father treated her unlike her sister Tayo. Tayo sympathizes with her situation. She knows her father's biasness in treating his daughters. She thinks that the current demand from his father would make him hate her more. She blames the new culture that her father has immersed himself into as the cause of all her problems. Traditionally, a girl was shielded from men and it was rare for a girl to interact with men. Finally, Rezian agrees to cook for the visitors after Tayo is allowed to do it with her. Oleisudori arrives in a procession of four-wheel drive vehicles. He is immaculately dressed and so is his three friends. 
Tayo starts sensing that he could be targeting her sister Rezian. He gives each of the family members generous gifts, including a briefcase to their father. Later, after leaving, Tayo talks to her father to get more information about Oloisudori and his mission in their home, but he reveals little. After failing, she plans to ask him to enroll them at Egerton, but she does not succeed. Olekailo calls for his daughter Rezian. He talks to her pleasantly and tells her that he has good news for her. Rezian misinterprets this, thinking it's about being enrolled at the university. Finding that they are on different pages, he dismisses her and calls for her mother. Chapter 14 The Wealthy Oloisudori Olekailo and his wife visit one of Oloisudori's homes in Naivasha. He wanted them to see the home he's building for their daughter so that they can easily convince her to marry him. Oloisudori compares Rezian with one of the legendary beauty in the land and this greatly flatters Olekailo. He also compares her with Lord Ngata, an English lady who drove a legendary gentleman crazy, but the lady finally refused to marry him, hence making the gentleman hate women forever. He intends to rectify that by building a palatial home that she would not turn down. Oloisudori is even ready to enroll her as a parallel student at Egerton if she marries him. However, she must undergo circumcision before he can marry her. Olekailo regards Rezian lucky and hopes his other daughter would find such a rich man who would give him generous dowry. Olekailo reminisces his journey with his wife to Oloisudori's palatial home in Naivasha with pleasure. He still remembers with awe the grandeur and magnificence of the house Oloisudori was building for Rezian in Milimani area of Nakuru, which made him decide that Rezian had to be married by Oloisudori come what may. Before parting, they hatch a plan of abducting Rezian if she offers resistance and are very happy about it. His wife is not very happy about the idea but has no option. She is unhappy that her daughter would miss a chance of going to Egerton University. Olekailo also seems at conflict but keeps assuring himself that Ole Sudori is a genuine man enjoying his own fruits of labor. Later, after a disturbed night, he has a dream in which Rezian accepts to marry Oloisudori without any resistance, and that raises husband and wife's spirits. Rezian and Tayo hatch a plan of returning all gifts Oloisudori had given them in his next visit to show him that they were not on sale. Rezian receives Oloisudori warmly into their home and hands over the carton she and Tayo had packed all his gifts. This catches Oloisudori by surprise, and he is made to believe that the battle has been won. He reveals his plans to marry her, and she is shocked by the revelation. They have a nasty exchange of words with Rezian, telling him that she can only be his wife over her dead body. Rezian storms out of the house and confronts her father in his shop at Nasila. Olekailo confirms his intention to marry her off to his friend and says he has no intention of enrolling her to university. She has a nasty verbal exchange after which he slaps her twice. She tells him that he better kill her than hand her over to his friend, the monster. Their bitter exchange attracts a crowd outside the shop. Rezian lives in a hurry and heads to the river where she contemplates committing suicide. Just then, Olarinkoi comes to what seems to be her rescue. She tells her that Oloisudori men are looking for her all over and that he can help her reach Minik's ranch. Rezian agrees to the idea and they plan to start off very early the following day. Chapter 15 The Real Olarinkoi after a sugarless breakfast served by a kind-hearted old woman, Rezian and Olarinkoi get into a pickup to start their journey to Minik's ranch. The old woman gives Rezian a lasso and a blanket to cover herself with. At the beginning, she is very optimistic and happy that finally her salvation has come. Later, the hot weather and the bumpy ride makes the journey very uncomfortable while dust, flies, mosquitoes, and the fear of wild animals haunt along the way. On the way, Olarinkoi is aloof. He does not communicate with Rezian, but this does not bother her, for her focus is to reach the ranch and meet Minik, her mentor. The pickup stops outside a mud plastered house with a rusty tin roof, and Olarinkoi orders her to alight. 
he orders her to follow into their desolate house which has two rooms Olarinkoi brings several foodstuffs he had brought with him in the pickup rudely gives Rezian several instructions on how to cook a meal and lives in a half soon she falls asleep and dreams where she meets Munich who promises to enroll her as a student at Egerton University and protect her from FGM. Her dream is interrupted by a loud bang at the door by Olarinkoi. He reprimands her for not cooking food and tells her that she is his wife. He proceeds to take her by force and a struggle ensues. Rezian bites his thumb and in defense he hits her on the ribcage making her pass out before proceeding to rape her. When consciousness returns, Rezian realizes she was in bed covered with bloody rags and naked. She begins to have a recollection of what happened but cannot go beyond biting Olarinkoi's thumb. She faints again and sees alternating images of both Olarinkoi and Oloisudori. When she regains consciousness, she notices another woman who she had been seeing her in hallucinations in her room. The woman is called Nabaru and is the nurse that has been treating her. One evening after she is able to walk on her feet, Olarinkoi's mother comes and admonishes her for biting her son's thumb and abuses her for being uncircumcised. She reveals that she intends to have her circumcised after recovering and that she and Olarinkoi would go to Tanzania to start their marriage. The nurse comes when she is deep in thoughts and tells her that Olarinkoi's mother is an Enkoiboni, a prophet, and had prophesied that her son would bring one of Olekailo's daughter home, circumcise her, and make her his wife. The nurse tells her that she has admired her courage and is ready to help her out in whatever plans she has. The news gives Rezian a new surge of hope. Chapter 16 Help Rezian has a life full of torment at Olarinkoi's home from insects, reptiles, as well as from the old Enkoiboni. The Enkoiboni has a lot of bitterness directed to the well-to-do in the society, such as Oloisudori. Nabaru informs Rezian she is under a lot of pressure from Enkoiboni to have her recover so that she can undergo the initiation ritual. Rezian pleads with her to take her to a Makerere's ranch, which Nabaru agrees to. When her health improves a little bit, Rezian starts venturing out of the homestead. She keeps the company of some two young women who are married early. Olarinkoi reappears after disappearing for several days and tries to ask for forgiveness from Rezian and even assures her that he will never molest her sexually again. He discloses that they plan to have her circumcised in two days' time so that he can marry her. After the revelation, Rezian realizes that her only hope is in Nabaru. She waits for her eagerly but does not come that evening. She has a dream in which she fights the Enkamuratani who wants to circumcise her. In Koiboni and when she is about to attack Nabaru, her dream is cut short by somebody calling out her name. Rezian at first is unable to stand to open the door for Nabaru, but after great effort, she reaches the door and opens it before collapsing. Nabaru administers some medicine through her mouth and she regains consciousness. The two women escape from the advancing Enkoiboni, Olarinkoi, and the Enkamuratani. As they walk to the main road to board a lorry, they experience a big challenge, the heavy rain. Olarinkoi catches up with them as the lorry is about to leave, exchanges assaulting words with the two women before leaving him standing in the rain. Finally, they reach the sheep ranch where Minik and Enkoitoi is the manager and the place where she longed to go. Rezian is very grateful for Nabaru's sacrifices to save her from Olarinkoi, saying that only God could repay her for her love and kindness. Three motorbikes catch up with them as they wait for their lorry to cool down. One of the riders is Munich, who also recognizes Rezian, having seen her picture in the papers which advertised her disappearance and promised a big reward to whoever would find her. Minik orders the driver to take her to the farm so that they can talk more. Rezian is now towards the end of a torturous journey, home stretch as the lorry heads to the station. Chapter 17 The Promise Rezian finds Minik sitting on the veranda of her spacious house. She is awed by her presence 
for she reminds her of her high school principal. She welcomes Nabaru and Rezian into her glamorous and elegant house. After bathing, she tells Minik the events leading to her present state. She discloses she has always admired Minik, wanted to meet her, and wanted to study veterinary medicine, which Minik herself did at Makerere University. She also tells her that she would like to join her in the fight against FGM. Minik observes that some cultural practices like FGM and the Muata had outlived their usefulness and should cease being part of mass culture. Nabaru promises to join Minik in fighting the practice. Minik also promises to have Tayo and Rezian enrolled at Igaton University, their lifelong dream. She also promises Rezian a scholarship and gives her a fully furnished house and a job in the ranch for the duration she will be studying at the university. Chapter 18 Sisters Reunion On her fifth day in the ranch, one mid-morning, a vehicle that Minik had sent on a rescue mission comes in the ranch. Minik goes to see the girl's condition and later sends for Rezian. Rezian is gripped by anxiety and apprehension on finding Minik angry. Minik is angry at the new culture brought by wealth where men would like young girls and forcefully circumcise them, hence lowering their esteem. She narrates the case about the girl. She tells Rezian the girl's rescue was not easy for the home where she was circumcised was heavily guarded and after lowering the guards, they were able to rescue her. But unfortunately, the man who assisted in rescuing the girl was speared to death by the thugs. She tells Rezian that the girl rescued was her sister and the killed man was Joseph Pomat, a teacher. Through recollections, Tayo remembers how her mother lured her to accompany three women, promising they would take her to Rezian. When they got to a soit village, she was abandoned in a smoky hut and in the morning was forcefully circumcised. After that, she went through several hallucinations. Rezian goes to her room and the sisters hug and kiss passionately. The reunion of the two girls is very emotional. Tayo slowly recovers with the help of Minik, nursing care of Nabaru and counseling by a teacher. Tayo fully recovers. She and her sister discuss their dark past events. They blame their mother for accepting to agree to everything their father said. They vow not to be subservient to their male counterparts. They also blame women for the perpetuation of FGM, arguing that if all women said no to the practice, men would do nothing about it. As the chapter comes to a close, Tayo is advised to accept what has happened to her and move on. She is also advised to ensure in future her children do not go through a similar experience. The three ladies agree that if they stand by their position, the primitive culture would end. Chapter 19 Dream Fulfilled Minik for calls for Tayo and Rezian later in August that year. She discloses that the contents of the two envelopes she has are about their admission in Egerton University. The girls are elated by the news. Minik organizes a farewell party for the girls. She invites many workers and girls to come and celebrate with the girls. The girls from Interpukaema sing a song that seeks to empower and energize them in the resistance of outdated cultural practices. In the song, they condemn FGM and envision themselves as great professionals, just like men in the nation. As they sing, Ole Sudori comes in a convoy of vehicles to demand to be given either Rezian or Tayo, arguing that he has already paid enough to have them both. Minik tells him to leave the place for he would have none of the girls. Oloisudori starts insulting Minik, calling her a spinster, who lost her chance to get married and now misquanders as an FGM crusader. Oloisudori orders his men to take Rezian by force and a vicious fight ensues between Rezian's workers and Oloisudori's men. Oloisudori's convoy is burned to the ground and he and his men run for their lives after a thorough clobbering. On 5th September the following day, Rezian and Tayo are full of happy sensation as they climb the four-wheel drive vehicle belonging to Minik to go to Egerton University, the Anivana. They think of ways to repay Minik for her kindness but all in all agree that it is well 
that ends well. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.